So there was two students that was dressed up as Klan members for Halloween have been indicted on charges of assault of a black teen in Woodsboro, Texas. Now they say it found guilty of the crimes. Both of the 17 year olds could face up to 10 years in Texas prison. So according to a refugio County grand jury indicted, Noel Garcia jr. Now, now wait a minute. Hold on. Noel Garcia jr. He, he not, he not no white folk who is Hispanic and Rance Bolsick, who is white on Thursday, December 16th with two third degree felony charges, engaging in organized criminal activity and tampering with evidence. After authorities say they attacked a 16 year old black boy with a stun gun on October 31st and later burned the costumes they were wearing during the assault. Let me tell you something about some of these other groups. Some of these other groups want to be teen white supremacy. Some of them do. Some of them, like I say, when you talk about raccoons in our community, there's raccoons in everybody community. They want to be joined the white supremacists and they know if they want to get in good, the white supremacists, you got to attack black folk. Now I said the boys, both football players at the Woodsboro high in the Southeast Texas town dressed as clan members when they terrorized the victim with the electroshock weapon. According to authorities, they said both Garcia and Bolsick, two indictments will include hate crime enhancement. I said another person, a teenage girl was mentioned in the indictment as an accomplice is that she is said to have recorded the incident from a cell phone camera and assisted the teens in burning the clothes. However, she has not been charged. Oh, she needs to be charged with being an accessory. Oh yes, she do. Texas monthly reports that all four students involved in the case of two boys, a girl and a victim attended Woodsboro high school. It said victim actually plays on the same football team as Garcia and Bolsick. They said Texas monthly reports that uh, they had a one minute video of the attack shot from a cell phone. A girl is filming the footage is said to show the victim trying to get away from his attackers. The victim says, that's not funny. Stop. They say, if you say their names, they're going to tase you. The girl warns noise from the taser can be heard as she continues to get closer. If she says surround him, uh, the girl instructs Garcia and Bolsick and says surround him. That's what she said. So why hasn't she had got charged? She, she is a part of it. She's telling them what to do. She's telling them that she is an accomplice. Oh no, she need hate crime charges too. Why she get to get away with it? Uh-uh. So the, the brothers, the little young brother say chill. You say he was trying to dodge the boy dressed in the white sheet and handling the device. Um, the girl has said KKK before instructing one, of, one of them to get on the side of him and the other said, get on that side. And the girl starts giggling loudly. Now the black teen is shocked once by one of the hooded figures before the video ends. Say the victim's attorney, Matt Manning said, I'm hardened in so far in this indictment is proof positive that at least the citizens of the grand jury in Refugio County saw the evidence and saw that the evidence was indisputable. Saw what my client said happened in fact happened. And they are now going to bring to account at least two of those people who are involved with the crime. Say it remains unclear if the 16 year old girl has been or will be arrested. Said Manning State. Say another white teen who was trying to intervene also appears at times in the video near the black boy. That said Manning, uh, as reported, uh, says that six other people also claim to have harassed, have been harassed by the same group of teens. They said the Woodsboro ISD superintendent Ronald D. Sagers Jr., who represented the school district. Uh, that the two teens and the students in said in a press conference uh, that was posted on Facebook, he was disappointed in the behavior while absolving the school from disturbing acts of the two. He said, he wrote, while we are deeply disappointed that any of our students might find this type of behavior acceptable, the district cannot discipline students for this type of conduct when it occurs off campus. Yeah, they always say that, but when it comes to black people, they sure find a way to discipline us. Now, Sigurds noted the school would provide counseling for any student impacted by the event. So they say since the indictment, the district released another statement saying regardless of the advancement of any criminal case against any Woodsboro ISD student, the district's position remains unchanged. The alleged conduct was reprehensible. Woodsboro ISD remains committed to ensuring that activities like those alleged to have occurred on Halloween do not take place in our schools. And we are working both uh, on our campuses and in Woodsboro to teach our students that racism and violence have no place in the Woodsboro, Texas. Now, y'all, let me tell you something. 
people have have got upset saying with the school saying the off campus position and called them out and say for the two boys to participate in a football game a week after the assault. Now, are you serious? Let me tell you something. There's a code of conduct, okay, even to play football. And if you're not acting right in the community, most football programs won't let you play. So how in the hell you got these two white supremacists, and that's what both of them are, we're allowed to play football. That doesn't make any kind of sense whatsoever. Say, oh, no. It said, no, we can't let you in this. No. First of all, the young man plays here. We're not going to allow that. And you violate our code of conduct. Because you're supposed to represent yourself right in the school and your local community. Or have they changed that since I last played football? They say in a press conference in November, Manning said the two students' actions, heinous, inexcusable, and disgusting. Say, but for you to dress up as a Klansman, you have a specific intent of terrorizing, according to the attorney. It said that's not an accident. That's not kids being kids, not boys being boys. Is that's not hazing or high school hijinks? Is a high school hijinks or egging someone's house, not dressing up as a Klansman and tasing them? Now they're both sitting in a county jail with a ten thousand dollar bond over their heads as they await trial, which is nothing because all they got to do is post what both of them post what a thousand dollars to the bills bondsman and they're out of jail. So, you know that's not really much of anything. But let me tell y'all something. Just like I thought, <laughs> when I do these stories or podcasts, whatever, ladies and gentlemen, I always look at the demographics. Okay, so this is the demographics. Woodsboro, Texas is 87.95% white. Black people, 4.24%. Other races say 4.09%. Two or more races, 3.42. Now, didn't I tell y'all, have I preached to y'all many, many times before that when you have your population in single digits, in these cities, black people, that's not good for us at all. Your population at minimum need to be, and I'm talking about the minimum 10%. And that's, and that's way low, preferably 20 to 25%. If if, preferably, if you want to say that, but lowest 10%, maybe I'll let you have it a little bit, maybe. And it depends on how much the white population is there too. So this is the problem that we have, ladies and gentlemen, I told y'all anytime you're in a town where the demographics are definitely under 10% for black people, you're going to have more problems. I've said that time and time and time and time again, and I have not been wrong. Every time I research these stories, this is what I find every freaking time. So when it comes to your kids, before you move to these towns, we have Google now. You can find out in two seconds, just like I did, the demographics of any town you want to move to. Look at the demographics or even anything. Just go there. See what's up. See what black people say about these areas. I'm not moving nowhere that that black people are only 4% of the population. Hell no. Uh Uh-uh. No. I got to be in an area. Even Now, if you're in a metroplex area, you better make sure there's a lot of black people. It's just that simple. You got to do that. Just, it's just for our overall protection. Cause when we, we don't have the numbers, this is what happens. So let's see what happens in this case. But yeah, they run around here like, like little clan members and trying to tase black people and do things, whatever they want to do. Both, both the, uh, both of them are white supremacists. And, and, and the interesting part is about the, the Hispanic dude. They don't want your behind here either. They want to build a wall for you. You know, only thing they want you here to do is pick their strawberries and pick their grapes. That's what they want you here to do. Other than that, they don't want you nowhere around them. But you want to run around here and, 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 and with, with some little, you know, sucker white supremacist male and go join in with him talking about putting on a, a, a clan robe. Boy, all these people here. And you wonder why brothers and sisters don't stand up for nobody but ourselves now. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying? You wonder why? Because we don't we, we're seeing too many of these, you know, conflicts now where you join in with the white supremacists. And I always say black folks make a list of, of people who have a constant behavior. I'm not talking about a one-off, but a constant and to say, okay, all right, we got you. We got you. Cause we know white supremacy. They are going to circle right back around to you. And when they circle right back around to you, don't, you know, Hey, you know, you want to go join them people, right? You want to put on clan hoods and all that? Well, deal with them. You know, when you get in the issue, Cause that, that's what we're doing as black people. Now we're not coming. Nobody's rescue. 
No, no, no. Now we'll come to the rescue of an individual that has put in work with our community. That's fine. I would defend an individual all day long from whatever community that's fighting hard for, for my people. I sure would. But as a group, nope, I am not defending groups. I would defend the individual. And that's the perfect thing to be on because the one thing is black people you have to do. You have to make sure that you rock with those that rock with you, but groups don't rock with us. So we don't never go defend this whole said groups. We never do that. But thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining us on the podcast today. Um, we greatly appreciate you being here. If it's your first time, you know, make sure you click that subscribe button. So you know exactly when we post another podcast, make sure you click the like button. Cause that's very, very important. You know, try to hopefully get our videos spread out there a little more in the YouTube algorithm. And as we have coming up on the new year, we have our end of the year fundraiser. Now that fundraiser is to help us push our plans for 2022. If you go to the GoFundMe, and there's a link below, or you can click that link with a little picture on the screen. Um, it would detail everything we are trying to plan to do in 2022. And we need your help. We're not funded by corporations or investors. Um, not even black people. Cause you know, a lot of these black people, they got, you know, funds, uh, they want to stay in good graces with, with, you know, them folks. Right. So we always have to look at the people and the, it always got to come from the grassroots. I thank everybody that has donated so far. And, um, but you know, let's, let's see, we can hit our goal here. It, it help us start 2022 and on with the ground running, but thank you for listening and see you next time.